Hello, welcome to the Millionaire Woman Show, where we'll be discussing leadership, business, and human potential, inspiring you to live rich from the inside out, unlock your creativity, stretch out of your comfort zone, break through your barriers, take inspired action, and achieve epic results. Now, here's your host, two-time best-selling author, speaker, and certified executive coach, Deborah Kosowski. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of the Millionaire Woman Show. And we have such an amazing guest on the show today, and I can't wait to share her with you. Dean was paralyzed in 2012 by an autoimmune disorder called transverse myelitis. And she has over 10 years of experience as an x-ray technologist specializing in cardiac catheterization lab. And she is also a certified makeup artist who has worked numerous fashion shows and photo shoots. Since being diagnosed and achieving milestones that seemed impossible, Bean is determined to make her experience a positive one to help others affected by disability and vowing to never give up. She is the co-founder and administrator of ReU, a local Edmonton nonprofit paralysis recovery center. And Bean was one of the recently featured as one of the models with disabilities in Western Canada's Fashion Week. And this was the first fashion show in Canada to have this as part of their Fashion Week. And I had the pleasure of meeting Bean at one of our friend's uh, book launches for Chica. And it was such a great treat to meet her. Um, I'm totally inspired by her. So I'm, I'm really excited to uh, have you share your story. Thank you. Thank you for having me. That was a great introduction. <laughs> Thanks. I know you're frequently asked to share your story, and it's such a powerful story. And many of us uh, take things for granted. And most of the time, I like to believe that it, that's not intentional. Mm -hmm. I, I would love for you to share some of the background and what has brought you um, from that life altering day to where you are today. Where did it all start? Sure. Well, I, like you said, I was paralyzed in July, 2012. I was in Las Vegas when it happened and it was on Friday the 13th. Um, I was laying in bed with my friends and I had excruciating pain in my low back, lasted a few minutes and then I wasn't able to move my right leg. Um, a couple minutes later, my left leg went prickly from my hip to my toes and I was completely paralyzed from the waist down. Um, obviously my life was flipped upside down at that moment. Uh, I spent 12 days in the hospital in, in Las Vegas and got to experience the medical, uh, or American medical system, which was fabulous. Um, you know, I went through a lot of ups and downs. I started off very positive because I was told I had conversion disorder and so that I would be walking within two weeks and I would regain all my function. Um, obviously I didn't, and that was quite a big letdown to me. Um, and then I just, it was doctor after doctor. I would try any kind of therapy I could find. I tried a natural healer who ended up giving me three first degree burns and still didn't heal me. Oh no. Yeah. And, um, all throughout this, um, luckily I hired a psychologist and she really helped me get through all of this. And, not just my paralysis, but all of my feelings and emotions that I've been hiding uh, or sweeping under the rug for the past 30 years of my life because I never really talked about my emotions. So I, uh, I attribute a lot of my recovery to her because she really helped me <clears throat> see the real me and she really reinforced in me that I am still, still the same person whether I'm walking or not. Um, and then after a few months, I ended up falling into a deep depression. It was around Christmas time, and I had to cancel my trip that I had booked to Puerto Rico with all my friends. Um, they all went, and my sister went. I couldn't go, and so I think that's what kind of kicked off my depression. And uh, it was really difficult. I hated everything about myself. I hated everything about my life, my situation. Um, I ended up gaining a lot of weight because when you're sitting all the time, it's really easy to put a lot of weight on without noticing. And especially when you're in that dark mindset where, you know, you can't really see the light at the end of the tunnel and you don't want to. 
um, it's really easy to get wrapped up in the, the self-pity and the self-hate. Um, but it was when I was at the Glen Rose Hospital, I got admitted um, in February 2013. So I was at home alone for seven months by myself. Um, of course, my family and friends were there, but you know they don't really understand what you're going through and they try to, but nobody, they don't really get it. Mm -hmm. And I've never met anybody else in a wheelchair until I got to the Glen Rose. And that's where I kind of felt um, normal. And, um, you know, I made some lifelong friends there and it was there that I met a girl who is a quadriplegic and, uh, she said that she would be happy if she could just move a finger. And it was that moment, that sentence that turned my mind around because I said, I am fully functional. I'm fully independent. I can do everything for myself. So you're not allowed to feel sorry for yourself anymore because it can always be worse. Yeah. And so, yeah, that was the moment that I turned my attitude around and everything else turned, seemed to turn around with it. Wow. Well, mobility was obviously one of the changes in your life. And you mentioned a little bit, but what other changes occurred with you as a result of this diagnosis and um, outcome when you realized that you didn't have the convergence disorder? Um. I guess like a lot of things shift in your life, right? I mean, things that were important before are no longer important to me now. Um, you know, I drove a really nice sports car before. I cared about, I made a lot of money. And so uh, materialistic things were very important to me. And now where I have almost zero income, you know, for the last few years, you shift your priorities. Um, I wasn't able to drive my sports car anymore because it was a standard. You know, so now I drive a $1,500 Saturn Ion, but, you know, um, not only just materialistic things, I take everything, I don't take anything for granted anymore. You know, sometimes I find myself taking my hands for granted or, you know, that I, I still have my pity parties and stuff or that I feel, um, what am I, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I don't know. I just feel that, you know, I... So, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I just take my hands and my, my mobility for granted. And then I have to check myself and just be like, hey, this could be taken away from you in an instant. It was given, it was, you still have it, so be grateful for it. And that's kind of the message that I try to drive home to like people that I meet and um, people that are complaining about little things that I wish I could do, that I wish I could complain about. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's a main lesson, I guess. Yeah. And I guess, you know, we do all, we might have a setback and think that we've lost so much, yet at the mm -hmm. same time, it's so easy for us to fall into that, um, that we do take things for granted because we think it's always going to be there. Yeah. So what was your greatest challenge adapting to having a new life? It's kind of because it's kind of like everything got reset. Yeah, for sure. I call the day I was paralyzed my rebirth day. So many ways I was reborn. And uh, like a baby when you're born, when you're paralyzed, you have to learn how to do everything over again. Roll over, sit up, crawl, walk. The only thing is, is when you're a baby, you have instinct. And you know, you know that this is what you're supposed to do. But as an adult, we don't have that. We lost that instinct when we were kids. And so we have to mentally think about everything that we're doing and put effort into it. Um, I'm sorry, what was your question? I lost my what was the greatest challenge for you adapting to this new life? Oh. So you've reset and you know, you're starting just like from a baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was definitely mentally, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I struggled with the most and sometimes I still struggle with it is being in a seated position, I'm always shorter than everybody. And so for me to physically have to look up to everyone and have everyone look down at me was really, really hard for me to grasp because I have always been a very strong, confident woman. And so when I'd walk into a room, I always make eye contact with everybody. But now nobody sees me, you know, and I'm kind of pushing people away just so I can get through. And they're always constantly looking down at me. And that was kind of still is one of the hardest things that I've had to deal with. So have you said, hey, hey, come down, <laughs> come to, down to my level here? 
Yeah, I mean, most people do. Most people will yeah. kneel or they'll find a chair or something, but, you know, it depends on the environment that you're in, right? Yeah. So you are an influencer, obviously an inspiration. Yeah. As a leader, what advice would you give people struggling or questioning the pursuit of their goal? Because I know you've really um, formed some big goals as you have transitioned to this new lifestyle. Yeah. Um, but I know that there's people out there, they're questioning, should I go after what I want? Are they struggling? They're sitting on the fence. What mm -hmm. advice would you give them? My best advice is just believe in yourself. You know yourself better than anyone. And if you feel that you can do it, then you can do it. And if you know that in your gut, and you know, one thing I've learned, I've been doing yoga for nine years, is listen to your body. Your body will tell you what you need to know. And uh, whether you can feel your body or not, that's completely irrelevant because your soul and your body will speak to you. Um, so yeah, listen to yourself, believe in yourself because everybody has self doubt. I've, I do still sometimes too, but your doubt has to be a lot smaller than your belief. Absolutely. And, and I too, at times you, you self doubt yourself and that's usually when you're stepping out of your comfort zone and doing what you exactly should be doing. <laughs> totally. So how do you stay motivated? Uh, that's a good question. It's a question I get asked a lot, but I don't really have an answer because to me, it's just, there's no other option. You know, like I've always been a very positive person. Um, so for me in my, to in my recovery and in my life, there's never been an option to quit. It's never been there. And the time when I got close was in my depression. And that's when the first, for the first time in my life, I felt like I don't want to continue. I'm just going to give up and that's it. But, you know, I remember what that felt like and I don't ever want to go back to that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to feel that ever again. So to me, I just, you know, I see people around me and on this journey, I have met so many incredible, strong people that, you know, they inspire me to keep going. And when I see somebody else reach their goals, <clears throat> excuse me, or say, hey, I wasn't able to do that two weeks ago, you know, that makes, that makes me feel really good. And it kind of enforces in me that I need to keep going and I need to keep doing this to help every other person that wants to do it too. Yeah, that, that is so amazing. And I think, you know, when we have that never quit option, mm -hmm. it makes you work harder. It makes you hustle more and yeah. really go after what you want because you're like, okay, there's no way out. What else am I going to do about it? I'm going to sit yeah, here and pout. Do? <laughs> <laughs> so we, we also face judgments um, and criticism, whether we, how we look, whether how we walk, how we talk, move. You know, sometimes people feel criticized and judged. What are the ways that you deal with judgment? Because I know... Um, I don't know if you've ever read Don McGill Ruiz's book, The Four Agreements. No, I haven't. But one of the agreements is about not taking everything personally, whether it be positive or negative. You could have two people look at you and give you a compliment on an outfit, for example. Mm -hmm. One will say something positive, one will say something negative. But to always remember it comes from their perception. It's not my perception or your, you know, your individual perception. How do you um, deal with judgment or criticism? Um, I think now how I deal with it is I just let it slide off my back, honestly, because it, like you said, it is their perception. It's not what I think of myself. It's mm -hmm. what they think of me. And most of the times it's what they think of themselves is what they're saying about me. And, um, so I try not to let it bother me now, but in my first two years of my paralysis, um, I was very insecure and, um, you know, when we would go out to the mall or go shopping or whatever, I couldn't even make eye contact with anybody. I would keep my head down and my sister would push me and I knew everyone was staring at me because you don't ever see people with disabilities out and about. And, um, it made me feel very, very uncomfortable. And especially being East Indian and when you would see other East Indian elders or families or whatever, you know, and they're staring at you and they're staring at you with the look on their face of like, what happened to that girl? Mm. You know, it's, it's not a good feeling. I didn't like it. And um, it really, really bothered me. Mm -hmm. 
it took me a long time to figure out that it's not me is not what I think of myself. It's what they thinking. And so, uh, yeah, now I just, I don't even know like what the switch was, but I know my therapist helped me with that. Yeah. And you know, of what, you know, what, how you see yourself and how others see you are two totally different things, but it comes back to how you believe in yourself. Too, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what it makes me think about is you have developed a team around you to get you to this place of success. Cause we're going to share with people what your success story here is coming up is not only moving through the paralysis, but the launch of something phenomenal, one of a kind. Mm-hmm. Um, but really thinking about what it takes to put together, we have a team for a business, we have a team for our lives, and people don't think they have a team, but we have the doctors, we have lawyers, we have mm-hmm. dentists, we have all a hairdresser, <laughs> we have all these yeah. people who are part of our team. What have you learned about the team that you have been working with through your journey? Uh, I think the most important thing is to have quality over quantity. Um, You know, I have a lot of people that have come in and out of my life and um, it's hard to not get rid of, but remove the people from your life that aren't serving you. And uh, your team, I call them beans team, you know, and so it's my trainer, my massage therapist, my family for sure. And like my circle of friends, um, you need those people. It's your support system, whatever kind of adversity you're going through, you going through it by yourself is, you know, very, very difficult. And then you're left with those thoughts in your head. And most often they're often they're negative thoughts. And sometimes that's how they can win. Um, but having a proper team and people around you that care about you and that want to see you succeed is huge, huge in anybody's recovery of whatever you're recovering from. Okay. So what advice would you have give, would you give your 16 year old self now? Oh boy. (laughs) I would tell myself to relax, calm down. You will get a boyfriend. He is going to be good looking. And, <laughs> and uh, don't worry about your weight. Don't worry about it. That's what I would say. Just be confident. Be confident in yourself. Yeah. We, we worry so much about all these things, yet they all come together at one point. I, I know yeah. my daughter is about to go to university and th- worried about, you know, am I going to make the wrong choice? Mm-hmm. But we all, figure it, we all figure it out as we go. And we can adjust the course and we forget that we actually have the choice. We have a choice to respond or react to a situation. And um, really, and I like what you touched on earlier, is about how your emotions play a big part of your reaction to things. Mm -hmm. So tell us more about Ryu and how it all got started. This is the really exciting part that I want to share with people, that you're doing something really groundbreaking. Thank you. Yeah, so I, um, a year after my paralysis, I went to a place in California called Project Walk, where they had, it's a spinal cord injury recovery center. Um, the therapy that I, I did there, I was there for three weeks. And in the first week, I had, the results I saw in the first week couldn't compare it to the 10 months of physio I did here prior to that. Um, so when I was down there, I knew I had to find a trainer a kinesiologist to help me when I got back with my home program. So I contacted the U of A um, through them. I got a bunch of responses back and Nancy was one of them. And uh, so I hired Nancy and she's been wanting to work with people with neurologic conditions since she was like seven years old. And uh, so, yeah, we've been working out together for the last three and a half years. Um, she's since graduated to become a kinesiologist, and she's gone to the States and taken a few other courses uh, of neuro, neuro recovery on her own time. And because she's so dedicated and so passionate about this work, uh, I've seen huge recovery. I've reached huge milestones because of her help, uh, also my hard work. Um, And then every person that I meet, I introduce them to Nancy and all of her clients have progressed. 
And so a couple of years ago, her and I started talking about opening um, a center here in Edmonton, but the timing wasn't right. I wasn't really in the right headspace, and uh, so it didn't happen. But then we've slowly been, we've still been talking about it, talking about it. And then last year, I got really, we got really serious about it, and that's how Re was born. And now we're open. We opened our doors last Monday. It's so exciting. And uh, your tagline... And, and just tell us a little bit more about what people would expect from working in that facility and who is sure. it for? So our tagline is reconnect, retrain and redefine. So we are reconnecting the brain to the muscles below the injury. We read, retrain um, your nervous system and we're redefining what is possible. Um, so our center is open to anybody with any kind of neurologic condition. Um, uh, that's it could be stroke, um, acquired brain injury, uh, spina bifida, cerebral palsy, anything under the umbrella of neurologic conditions. We offer activity-based training, um, which is uh, kind of like uh, how, how do I explain it in layman's terms? <laughs> kind of like regular workouts that you do any any able-bodied person would do. We do with assistance, and the only difference, well, one of the differences is is the client really needs to think about which muscle is contracting and relaxing at the same time, mm -hmm. while Nancy is moving the affected limb. Um, we also offer a TheraSuit program, and that was designed for people with cerebral palsy, but it also works for other neurologic conditions as well. Yeah. And we hope to expand um, in, the next, in the next few years with massage, acupuncture, um, nutrition, which is a huge part of anybody's life, whether you have a neurologic condition or not, um, and weight training. And we have a whole bunch of ideas of what we want our center to become, but we're very happy to offer this uh, therapy to people of Edmonton because right now there's nowhere you can go to re recover. It's going to be just amazing. I know you've been featured in the Metro, you've been on the news. So it's really cool to be able to have a chance to share this. And I do want to touch on one thing because I, I found it while I was doing a little bit of my research. And please share it with our listeners about your GoFundMe page. Oh yes, we are fundraising to rate. We're, our, our goal is twenty thousand dollars. We would like to buy a body weight supported treadmill so that we can help our clients stand and walk in a safe manner. Um, you, to donate, you can go to our website www.reu.ca or to GoFundMe.com/reuprc. Any donation is much appreciated. Yeah, and I saw you're over halfway there. So over halfway there, yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. So again, it is R-E-Y-U. So you really want to just read about the story. It's inspirational. Let's help this become a reality. I didn't even know that they made treadmills like this. It's just phenomenal. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Great. And I actually saw on your Instagram some pictures of you standing and uh, so it's really cool to watch the progression as well. Um, and just the growth, just, I can just see in the pictures, your face, the confidence, and just with having a chance to talk to you the other day, um, how powerful your mindset has been in really getting to where you are today. Thank you. So who has been your greatest teacher? Oh, my mom, definitely. She's one of the strongest women I've ever seen. She's been through a lot of adversity herself, and um, she's always taught us to never give up. You always keep fighting. As long as you are breathing, you keep fighting, and you make a life for yourself. Yeah. My mom. Phenomenal story of resilience. Thank you. So what is one book that has changed your life, been the game changer? Sorry, you were cutting out there. One book that has changed your life. Is there a certain book that oh. has really shifted the way you think about things or made yeah. you take different actions? Yeah, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. After I read that, it totally changed my mindset. I think that was about 2008 or 2009 that I read that book. And um, it totally shifted my mindset. And I read it again after I was paralyzed yeah. and it kind of, I got new meaning out of it after that. Um, but that's definitely one book that I recommend to everybody because it's just, 
you know, it, it changes the way you think about things. Do you have a favorite habit? A favorite habit? Um, yeah. Of, of those seven oh, habits, do you um, have one favorite? I don't know. Honestly, it's been so long since I read it. I don't remember yeah, yeah. exactly them. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it, it is fascinating. And I think one of mine that always, because there's seven and I don't always remember all of them. Yeah. The one that really stands out for me, well, there's a couple, sharpening the saw. So you're always mm -hmm. wanting to get better. Mm -hmm. And the other one is always starting with the end in mind. If you have yeah. a vision of what you want. And when you think of Ryu, mm -hmm. you, when you envisioned it, is it what you envisioned where you're starting from now or no. what is it at now for you? No, we're starting very small. And that's what we did it on purpose because we wanted to be able to handle it and control it. Um, our vision is huge. We are in a, in a, in my head, we're in a multi-million dollar facility with state of the art equipment and just a lot of space and amazing clients. And so right now we're in a very small room. <laughs> we have a couple of clients, but that's how we wanted it to start. So we have room to grow and so that we can grow with it. Well, we can't wait to watch you walk into that vision and just be able to celebrate it with all the people that you're working with and inspiring along the way. And I think it's more important and to really bring things mainstream so that when people who are in a wheelchair go to the mm -hmm. mall, that they can feel that it's part of the norm. It's not mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, they're singled out and wondering what happened to them. And, you know, and, and I know that was one of the first questions I asked because I saw you on Facebook with the fashion show and I saw um, some other pictures of you I hadn't read an article, but I wanted to hear the story of where you've got to. Mm -hmm. um, what I find the most powerful is listening to people's journey from where they were to where, where they started and yeah. where they started to where they are now. Cause I think every single person out there has a story to share. And, um, and I am grateful that you were able to share the story with us today. Thank you. I'm grateful for the opportunity to share my story. Yes. Anytime I get to, I get to raise awareness for, you know, not only what happened to me, but I get to speak for anybody else who has a disability and kind of like change the stigma about it, right? One mind at a time, you get to change people. You bet. What has been the greatest reward for you of part of this journey? Oh, good question. Um, I think just meeting all the people that I've met, there's, I would never have crossed paths with any of these people in my regular, you know, pre-paralysis life. And so now that I've gotten to know so many amazing people, we've become, become friends with so many strong, courageous people, um, that's definitely been the best gift for sure. All right. So our final question is, how can people stay in touch with you? Oh, very easily. You can find um, Ryu is on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Um, my personal, you can find me on Facebook at under Bean Gill or on Instagram at Branzoid um, or at bean at ryu.ca is my email address. Let's get in contact. <laughs> awesome. Well, everyone, that has been a wrap for the Millionaire Woman Show. We want to thank Bean Gill from Ryu for joining us today. And I want you, you might want to play this interview over and over because there will always be that one nugget that stands out for you. And one of the main themes throughout this interview is if you never quit, never let quitting be your option. Yeah. It's one of the most powerful lessons being that you have shared with us. And I think it's so important and it applies to many places, whether it be relationships, whether it be business organizational things, whether it be in your own health, never give up. Don't let it be an option because as soon as it's an option, you have an exit. Yeah. So, so really thinking about that. Um, I'd love for you to send me an email or be in an email to let them know, let her know what nugget of information really stood out for you. Go over to my website at www, the millionaire woman. Um, <laughs> it's Deborah We're on the millionaire woman show and uh, give us a, go onto iTunes, write a review, give us a five star high five. We would love to hear from you. And when you go over to the website, there is a free download for you. Um, the 10 surefire strategies to help boost your productivity and performance. So 
as Muhammad Gandhi said, be the change you wish to see in the world. And I want you to go out and make today great. Take care, everyone.